if someone has delirium and um, they are uh, not agitated, um, it, it's questionable where, whether anything really needs to be done because certainly when we look at the evidence surrounding treatment, there's little evidence that antipsychotic treatment, for example, with haloperidol, and certainly I published a cotiapine study, but it was a small study that had, you know, it was randomized double blind, but it had some methodological limitations, mainly its size, and there were some confounders. So at this point, you know, the pain, agitation, delirium guidelines from the Society of Critical Medicine really don't advocate a strong role for antipsychotics in critically ill patients. I think the, uh, the other thing that needs to happen when during the delirium assessment process, in addition to, um, you know, finding out if they have delirium is really asking the questions um, are, and, or the nurse, and, and hopefully doing both, is looking at whether the patient has um, hallucinations, whether they're fearful. Um, probably about 20% of the patients with delirium in the ICU will have, you know, delusions, hallucinations. They're very, very fearful. And that, those are the patients that really do need some treatment with very low dose antipsychotics. Um, and it's important to ask those additional questions because, for example, the, the CAMICU assessment, unlike the ICDSC, does not evaluate hallucinations or fearfulness in patients.